Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this talk about the two-dimensional knapsack problem for convex polygons. My name is Arturo Merino and this is joint work with Andrea Vise. Okay, so let's go right into the problem definition. So in this problem, uh, we are given a square knapsack of side n, where n is an integer. We are also given m convex polygons, which have vertices with integer coordinates and uh, these polygons will have some weight associated to them. And we're also allowed to translate and rotate these polygons as we see fit. What is our objective? So what do we want? We want to find a subset of polygons such that they fit non-overlappingly into the knapsack. So for example, let's say that we take this highlighted polygon, we translate it into the knapsack, and now we see that uh, this is a problem because uh, it's, it's not placed uh, completely inside the knapsack, but after some appropriate rotation, we can actually, actually make it fit. And now let's say that we take this polygon over here, uh, we translate it into the knapsack, and now we see the two problems. So not only this polygon doesn't fit completely into the knapsack, but it's actually overlapping another polygon. But once again, after some appropriate rotation, we can actually make it uh, fit non-overlappingly. And of course, we want to maximize total weight. And even though this is a low weight solution, by packing a few more polygons, we can actually achieve this weight optimality. And a geometric knapsack problems have been uh, really, really studied in the recent years. Uh, and they are heavily, heavily reliant on what the input uh, shapes look like. So for example, for squares, there is a one plus epsilon approximation, and this was given by Janssen and Solis Ova in IPCO 2008. For rectangles, uh, there is a 17 over nine approximation. This was by Galvez, Grandoni, Heydrich, Ingala, Kahn, and Wiese uh, in Fox 2017. And the same set of others give a three over two approximation where you're actually allowed to rotate these rectangles by 90 degrees, so all of the previous work doesn't consider any rotation. And to deviate a little bit from this rectangle setting, there is actually some work in circles where they obtain a one plus epsilon approximation on the resource segmentations and weights given by the area. And this was by Linsmaya, Miyazawa and Xavier in Latin uh, 2018. So let's uh, for a bit highlight uh, a couple of the key novelties of this work. So the first important novelty is that we consider convex polygon. So not only axis parallel rectangles, which were the only uh, polygons considered before, but any given convex polygon. And the other key key novelty is that we allow for arbitrary rotation. So previous work had only considered 90 degree rotations of the polygons but we consider rotations by any given angle. And let's quickly give an overview of the results that we obtained. So first, uh, we obtain a constant approximation algorithm in quasi-polynomial time. This is for the general setting of convex polygons. If we restrict ourselves to only considering triangles, then we can obtain, once again, a constant approximation, but now uh, improving the running time to polynomial time. And we also have results in the setting of one plus delta resource fragmentation. Okay, so what does this mean? This means the following. We take the original knapsack and we are allowed to stretch it by a factor of one plus delta. And we compare ourselves to the original optimum. And in this setting, we can actually achieve a constant approximation in polynomial time for general convex polygons. And finally, in the same setting of one plus delta resource segmentation, we can achieve a, a solution with weight at least the original optimum in quasi polynomial time. So let's warm up a little bit uh, by looking at some of the unique challenges that this problem poses. So first is the issue that rotation is really needed. So one initial strategy could be to rotate the polygons uh, along their diameter by a little bit and then try to stack them from a uh, bottom to top in a shelf packing uh, manner. But this idea is really, really debunked by the problem that we can have polygons which have really, really long diameters. So the diameter is essentially the length of the diagonal. So we can only really pack them along the diagonal. 
So this means that we have to do some heavy rotation in these polygons, namely we have to rotate them by 45 degrees. Another issue that uh, usually doesn't appear in this type of geometric knapsack problems is the issue of irrational coordinates. So even though originally we were given integer coordinates, and even though after translation we can still hope uh, for having some nice coordinates, once we rotate them, the game totally changes and we will have irrational coordinates that are very, very strange. And one could think, oh, okay, I maybe can avoid this problem by taking the polygon and wiggling it a little bit, but this polygon could really, really be locked up uh, by other polygons in the optimal solution. So a priori, we cannot do this wiggling strategy. And a final issue that I want to highlight is that in many of these packing problems, if I give you a subset of items, it's actually easy to decide if they uh, are packable into the knapsack. But uh, in this case, this is not so easy. Let's say that I give you these polygons. It's not clear at all how we can pack them into the knapsack. And this is made uh, further uh, difficult because for each polygon, we actually have an infinite, uh, infinite possibilities for the rotation. So it's not clear at all on how one will do this packing. And just to have some peace of mind, we can actually pack this set of polygons into a knapsack and one can look that the packing looks really, really locked up and really strange. So you really need to, uh, if you were to guess somehow this packing, you will nearly read to do heavy rotation. And now that we are warm up, let's talk about our constant approximation algorithms results. And for this, let me first introduce the concept of a bounding box. So we will take any given polygon, we will find its diameter, and we will rotate the polygon until the diameter is horizontal. So it will look something like this. And once we've done that, uh, we will inscribe the polygon into the smallest possible rectangle. And this rectangle we will call the bounding box. So our high level strategy will be to uh, discriminate these polygons according to the behavior of their bounding boxes. So first we will have the easy polygons. So the easy polygons will be the ones where the bounding box fits without any rotation. Then we will have the medium polygons where if we rotate the bounding box by 45 degrees, then the bounding box will fit with some slack into the knapsack. And finally, we will have the hard polygons where even after rotating by 45 degrees, the bonding box won't fit with some slack or maybe even worse, maybe it won't even fit at all. And our strategy will be to devise constant approximation algorithms for each category separately. So let's go and try to attack the easy polygons. So for the easy polygons, we will take them, put them into their knapsack. And our key observation right now is that in doing so, we will have at most doubled the area of the original polygon. So what we will do is we will pretend that the polygons are actually the bounding boxes. So we will pack the bounding boxes and combining this, combining this with area arguments, we will show that the solution isn't too bad. So this will lead to a constant approximation algorithm in polynomial time for easy polygons. So medium polygons are a little bit more tricky. So we once again needed to rotate them by 45 degrees. So the idea is to define some rectangular containers along the diagonal. Then we will group the polygons by diameter. So polygons that have similar diameter will be grouped together. And what we will do now is we will stack the bounding boxes of these polygons into the corresponding rectangular container. And we have now two key insights. So the first key insight is that we can find the optimal packing of this form. And not only that, we can actually show that this uh, packing is constant approximative by once again using area arguments. And these ingredients will turn into a constant approximation algorithm for medium polygons. So now the uh, large part of this work is uh, devoted to uh, what to do in the case of hard polygons. So one key, key observation is that hard polygons are very big. 
So because they are very big, there can't be too many uh, of them in any given solution. In particular, there can be at most a logarithmic number of them uh, in the optimal solution. So because they are very few, one could uh, try to enumerate them in twice a polynomial time. But of course, there is this obstacle that we already talked about, that is how to check if any given guess is actually packable. And for this, the problem was actually that the polygons were to be locked up, so they would have really weird angles and positions. So because they would have weird angles and positions, uh, it would be really, really hard to guess them. And our idea is to, okay, we will delete some polygons. In doing so, we will lose a constant, uh, constant factor in the approximation, but we will free some space. And because we have freed some space, we can actually wiggle the polygons a little bit and come up with really easy angles and positions. This means that combining this strategy, we can achieve a constant approximation in quasi a polynomial time via a enumeration. So now let's talk a little bit about the setting of hard triangles. So what happens if every hard polygon is actually a triangle? So to do this, we will actually differentiate the polygons a little bit more in how they look in the optimal solution. So there will be some polygons where, where we look where they're facing and they are facing, for example, the same edge of the knapsack. These polygons we will call edge facing. So some other triangles will actually face adjacent edges of the knapsack and we will in turn call them corner facing. And of course, there is the natural question uh, of is a, every triangle either edge facing or corner facing? And the answer is no. So for example, triangles could maybe look like this, where they are neither edge facing nor corner facing. So the, what to do with those? So the thing is that this, uh, these triangles actually lock up uh, significant parts of the knapsack so there can only be a few of them in any given optimal solution. So this means that we can actually only focus on edge facing uh, triangles and corner facing triangles. So what we will do now is to devise constant approximations for edge facing triangles and corner facing triangles separately. So for edge facing triangles, uh, okay, they look something like this. We can start wondering how they look like in any given optimal solution. So we know a few things. So first, let's focus only on edge facing triangles that are facing this highlighted edge. So they must be packed around this diagonal and maybe they look something like this. And when seeing a solution that is like that, one thinks, oh, but the solution has some space between the triangles. So it's somehow wasting this space. So one can hope for, for example, thinking that one pushes the triangles to the top left uh, in such a way that they are now stacked. And uh, if one looks at how these triangles intersect this arrow, so let's enumerate them from left to right in this order, we will see that they are decreasing in longest side. So the longest side uh, is getting smaller and smaller. And our key key observation is that there exists a constant approximative solution which has exactly these three properties. And not only that, but we can actually compute uh, the solution in polynomial time with a dynamic program. So we, this will solve completely the problem for edge facing triangles. So now let's look at uh, corner facing triangles. And for corner facing triangles, our idea will be to step by step gets the correct triangle and the correct placement. So let's assume that we have correctly guessed the rightmost triangle. Now what we will do is we will look at the leftmost vertex of this triangle and we will draw a line up. So this line that we call L1, we can actually assume that it's, it is intersected by no other triangle. And now we will look at the line that is refined, defined by the rightmost point of this triangle, the rightmost vertex. And this line uh, that we call L2, it turns out that it also won't be intersected by any other triangle because it's defined by the rightmost point of the rightmost triangle. 
So this means that actually this uh, orange area and this light blue area are independent of one another. So what we can actually do is we can consider them separate pieces and we can recurse on them uh, individually. So let's now focus on the orange area and now we will do exactly the same. Namely that we will find the rightmost triangle, define L1, define L2. No one is intersecting neither L1 nor L2. We will find then two uh, sets that are independent of each other and we will continue the recursion. And okay, one has to be a little bit careful. So even though here I have defined it somehow in a recursive manner, the correct way to do it is by a geometric dynamic program. And combining these ingredients for edge facing and corner facing triangles, we are able to achieve a constant approximation in polynomial time for triangles. So now let's quickly talk about the setting of resource segmentation. And okay, so we talk about resource segmentation and the idea is that uh, in here we stretch the knapsack by a factor of one plus delta and we can uh, see that this is the same as uh, shrinking the polygons by a factor of one plus delta. So we do that and our idea will be now to group these hard polygons by a diameter into logarithmically many groups. So it will look something like this. So there are some guys who have very long diameter, others have very, very long diameter. And our key insight now is that each group will intersect the optimum in at most a, a constant number of polygons. And not only that, but after uh, doing this shrinking process, many of these groups will be non-empty. Sorry, sorry, will be empty. So actually only a constant number of them will be uh, non-empty groups. And therefore we can actually do enumeration uh, in polynomial time. So now let's talk a little bit about our last result, which is how to obtain optimal profit uh, under this resource segmentation setting. So for this, we introduce uh, our uh, first important lemma, and this is about shape rounding. So once again, we are in the setting of resource segmentation, so we think that we shrink each polygon by a factor of one plus delta. And our idea will be to find shapes that are in between the original polygon and the shrunken version. So it will be maybe look something like this. And it, the key observation is that we can do so by allowing just few shapes. So different polygons will be assigned the same in between shape. And in doing that, we can actually reduce the complexity of the polygons because we can uh, force the shapes to have very few vertices. So let's think a little bit about the consequences of this shape rounding lemma. And a first important consequence is that whatever the optimal solution does, we can do too by placing our shape uh, inside the polygon that the optimal solution packs. Another key uh, idea is that now we have actually few placements for each shape because we have given ourselves the so-called uh, wiggle room and we can take our shape and wiggle it a little bit inside uh, the original polygon. And of course, because we have a small number of shapes, we start getting some ideas. Namely, we start dreaming about enumeration in quite a polynomial time. And once again, we have the same obstacle as before, so how can we check if any given guess is actually packable? But now this obstacle is even bigger because we want to do so without losing any weight. And for this, we use the technique of balance separators. So balance separators did uh, deal with a given packing of the polygons into the knapsack, and they are a polygonal shape it will look something like this. And I won't tell you exactly what a balance separator is, but I will tell you some key properties of them. So the first key property is that if I look inside of the balance separator, the polygons that are completely compl contained inside of the separator, we have total area at most two thirds of the area of the polygons involved. If I look outside uh, of the balance separator, the polygons that are completely contained outside 
with cap area at most two thirds of the total area of the polygons involved, and the polygons which cross the balance separator will have really, really small total area. And the idea is that uh, we can guarantee the existence of these balance separators. So if every polygon has area at most a third of the total area of the polygons involved, and they have very, very few edges, then there will exist a balance separator. And not only that, but we can actually guess uh, this balance separator in appropriate time. So now one starts to wonder, okay, so balance separators somehow deal with the uh, placement into the knapsack, but they need somehow the placement into the knapsack. So now I will show you how we can actually obtain a placement by using these balance separators. So our idea will be very simple. So if we look at a set of polygons and we have a, a polygon that has at least one third of the area of the polygons involved, then we will guess a placement and otherwise we will actually guess a separator. So let's say that I want to pack these polygons and I actually have a polygon which has at least a third of the total area. So then we guess the correct placement. And now we know that everything uh, else must happen outside of the boundary of this polygon. So we will focus on this outside part. And now we look at these polygons and we actually don't have any polygon with at least a third of the area. So we can guess a balance separator. And not only that, but we can actually guess where the polygons lie. So we can actually guess which polygons go inside, which polygons cross the separator, and which polygons go outside the separator. And now we can uh, do recursion. So now we focus, let's say, on the outside of the blue separator. Now we have a polygon which has at least a one third of this area. Now we can guess the placement. And once again, this will divide the area even further. At least just keep a uh, one uh, layer of the recursion further. So now let's focus, for example, what happens inside of the blue separator. So now we don't have uh, any polygon with at least one third of the total area. So we can actually guess a balance separator and we can keep going. And this will uh, give a placement of uh, the polygons into the knapsack. Actually, if one is a little bit, uh, if one looks at the argument very carefully, one can notice that we actually didn't pack everything. So the polygons which cross uh, the balance separator are not actually packed, but they are no problem because they are very, very small. They have very small area. So because they have very small area, their bonding boxes will also have very small area. So we can actually pack them into this extra space that we gained by one plus delta resource segmentation. So combining all of these ingredients, we can actually get the optimal weight in quasi polynomial time. So let me end with some final remarks. And first I want to summarize the results that we obtain uh, for constant approximation without resource segmentation. So the, our idea was to separate the polygons into easy, uh, medium, and hard. So for easy polygons, we will pretend that they are rectangles. For medium polygons, we will stack them into diagonal containers. And for hard polygons, what we do is we see that there are few of them in the optimal solution. So we enumerate them. And combining these ingredients, we obtain a constant approximation in quasi polynomial time. And then we observed uh, the setting of triangles. So what we do in the setting of triangles, we further separate the hard triangles into edge-facing triangles and corner-facing triangles. So for edge-facing triangles, we pack them in this fun way. And for corner-facing triangles, we use a geometric dynamic program. And combining these ingredients, we, are actually, uh, we actually obtain a polynomial time approximation. Now let's summarize what we did in the setting of resource segmentation. So in resource segmentation, first we have a constant approximation by just noticing that there are a few non-empty groups and this we can do in polynomial time. And we also, we also can achieve the optimal weight by combining these techniques of shape rounding and balance separators. 
and this we can do so in quasi a polynomial time. So I want to end the talk with some open problems. So of course, one open problem is to uh, reduce this constant that we have uh, in this work, but I also want to explore some new settings. So let's say, for example, the setting where one only considers small polygons. So maybe the polygons are not only easy, where we can obtain really reasonable approximations, but maybe they have these linear constraints on the sides of the bounding box. Or another interesting setting will be to consider when the gates weights are given exactly by the area. So this is a really, really natural restriction. What can one do in this setting? Maybe even achieve a pitas? I don't know. And the most ambitious uh, challenge is to consider arbitrary polygons. So in here, here all strategies are out. So bounding boxes are really bad because they have fury compared to the original polygon. And yeah, this is somehow the most arbitrary, uh, the most uh, challenging uh, setting. Okay, so thanks for your attention. And I hope you enjoyed the rest of iCalc 2020.